is time for locust number one, which <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. The first time that I read this, I was confused as all get out, like real confused. But the more um, I've seen people work on this because I am a little late to the game this month in getting this going because of other things going on. If you watch my regular Flossy videos, you'll know it's been a little crazy. Um, but we are getting started tonight. We're picking everything, or well, Siri is going to pick things out for me. Um, and it's become less confusing the more that I have seen other people do it. So, um, what this locust includes is um, instructions on like the rolling and things like that, um, a math page to help you figure out how um, many repetitions that you need to do to make your stitch X big um, or small, um, depending on which border you got. And then you have a page with um, a template of the borders patterns. And then you also get a color key um, for the stitches. So um, if you needed a little bit more direction of which colors to pick for your border, you could go with um, the suggested ones. Um, okay, so let's just talk about this. So it says that this is for the borders. Um, there are two, an outer decorative border and the inner scale. So normally on a map, you see like a little scale down in one of the lower corners or, I mean, it could be anywhere, but it's usually near the compass and things like that. Um, but the inner border is actually going to be the scale. And then, um, there are three different borders that you can get a leaf border, a rope or the pennies. Now <laughs> rule number one, it literally says it on here. Nobody is watching you roll. If you roll something you don't like, you can take a mulligan or simply adjust the die to show a more desirable outcome. Um, so if for instance, you roll the leaf border, which it's massive, it's really pretty, but it's massive. Um, and you don't want to stitch that much. Nobody's judging you. It will turn out beautiful no matter what. So, um, technically nobody is physically watching me roll except for Potter, but I am recording this. So technically y'all are just keep in mind. I am giving myself a veto per locus. So if I happen to get the leaf, I will probably veto that decision. Um, the size, the final total stitch count, including the borders, um, was nominally stated, um, at 300 wide, 200 tall. Um, and it will be subtly adjusted so the border repeats come out even. Um, but it said that it can be radically adjusted if your cloth, um, or desires or are more limited or like you just don't want that big of a map. So, um, I don't know if I want to make mine as big as 300 by 200, but we'll see. Um, I haven't really decided. I, I, I was kind of leaning towards just stitching until I got bored of border and turning the corner and like turning the corner at the next nearest uh, pattern availability that makes sense. Um, and then doing the same thing and then calling that a day. I know a couple of people who are doing it like that. They're just kind of seeing how big they want it to be and they're just kind of going with the flow. Um, okay, and then it says, uh, extends the edge of the map part, not counting the border. Okay, so the first part is um, picking out if you're gonna start in the top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right. So um, it says to roll a D4 for your coastal starting point. Um, and so pick a number between one and four. A random number between one and four is three. Three. This will be really interesting because that is 
the bottom right. So bottom right is what three is. Okay. <laughs> that should be really interesting. I've never started from the bottom right before. All right. <laughs> um, that'll be weird. Okay. Moving on. Um, roll a D6 for your outer border. So if you roll a one or a four, it's the leaf. If you roll a two or a five, it's the rope. And if you roll a three or a six, it's the pennies border. So pick a random number between one and six. A random number between one and six is three. Pennies. I don't know if I'm mad about that or not. I'm, I mean, I don't mean mad, but I was debating on pennies or rope. So I need to think on it. Part of me kind of wants the rope because I feel like it looks more traditional. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to think on that. Okay. Um... So this just gives you um, some advice on where your coastal starting point is. Remember, lower right, weird. Um, stitching your borders at the closest corner so at least you have that section done in time to start the coastline stitching. Rotate the corner chart, blah, 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 so you can do all four corners. So that's the, the pattern page. Okay, and the last roll is um, roll a D4 and add three. That's your scale size. So pick a random number between one and four. A random number between one and four is one. One. So my scale size is four. So every... For my scale, it'll be four stitches of white, four stitches of red, four stitches of white, four stitches of red. So that's not bad. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. You get an idea of how much thread um, each border is gonna take you. Um, and then there's the math to get you going um, to figure out how many times you repeat a section. Um, I think I am going to play a veto here and I think I'm going to choose the rope border um, I just personally, I just like it a little bit more. Um, like I said, the leaf is gorgeous. It's beautiful. I've seen several people already do that one. It looks fantastic. Um, I forget who I want to say it's Katie, but she's doing it in Krynik, which is amazing, slightly insane, but amazing. Um, and I like the pennies as well, but I don't, I don't know. I don't like how the pennies has like a weird corner and I get why it does because it's supposed to look like pennies. But um, the rope just looks more simple, traditional to me. So I'm going to veto and go with rope. So basically, um, the rest of this video for borders is um, every time that I get to work on it, I will do a check-in with you guys um like at the end of each day so um you're just gonna see some little check-ins for the rest of this video so until then it is the next morning i did start my map last night but i probably got about nine stitches in <laughs> um so i have been working just a tiny bit this morning uh so you'll get another update today but um i did go with the rope uh, border and so it's a significant amount of black shocker I don't think I can do any project that doesn't have like at least 17 skeins of black in it I'm just joking but um okay so 
I just started on the black outline, but it's supposed to have, or it's supposed to have, it's charted to have, I'll say it that way, it's charted to have, um, a darker and a lighter gold, red and white, and then like a grape plummy color. And I'm gonna change it up. I, I'm only gonna do, use five colors instead of, is that six? Okay, so I've got my black, and I think I'm gonna use DMC's 111 for the gold and just take it as it comes uh, as far as like the variegation. And so like some areas will be darker, some areas will be lighter um, and blended in as I do the frame. I think that could look really cool. So I'm gonna go with that. And then for the plum outline, um, I'm going to use DMC's 99, so I should probably hold it up. So this color is going to go in between the little rope, rope pieces, and then it's <clears throat> that color. Um, and then for the red, for the scale, I don't know why, I'm just feeling like doing all the variegateds just for the outline. I don't know how much I want to get into variegated inside the map until like, you know, uh, I'll probably feel different once we get to, uh, the land pack and the, and the water pack. But anyways, um, uh, shish kebab. I'm thinking for the scale, I want to do 115 just to give it a little bit more dimension and then just white. So that's kind of the order that it's going to go in with black in between everything, but um, I don't know, I think that'll look really cool. So um, I'm just working in my hoop right now. So this is this is the lower right side of the fabric uh, where I was supposed to start. Um, and funny enough on the, so there's a paper in this kit. I'll kind of like, I'll kind of like doodle it out. It's like this. Okay, so there's like a pattern of the leaf corner, the rope corner, the penny corner, and then some like scale stuff. Um, and so you can just turn the paper whenever you get to each corner to know how to flip that corner. So. I'm eventually gonna have to print this out three more times whenever I get to the other corners um, just because of how like the rope in the corner is done um, that's where the penny that's where the penny border would have been easier but I just wanted it to be more square I think I think is honestly what it is more traditional more square looking just personal preference that's why I vetoed it um so um I'm going to just slowly build this out and um I'm gonna at least get this corner done um and then I will probably I was gonna like move across um but I don't know. I don't know. I might go up and then I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might go across just to get kind of the longest side of it figured out and then then I'll go up. I'm not really sure. But if it's 300 by 200, the section um, the section of rope frame on the sample page is about 55 stitches. So 55, no, right at 60 stitches. So um, fair, fairly, I have a fourth, you know, this is like the height of a fourth of it, so. 
I don't know, maybe I will make it the recommended size and then I can stretch it over canvas. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, that's what these videos are for. To show the whole process of coming up with the map. Um, so we'll see. Anyways, uh, I will check back in whenever I have more progress. Okay, so line from the table. Um, so I'm gonna have to move my uh, hope soon. Um, so it is still Saturday, uh, which is the day that I started this. Saturday the um, 13th. Um, so like I said, I'm a little behind on starting it uh, from where I wanted to start it this month. But, um, so I really like the colors that I picked. Um, I showed them a little bit earlier and I really, really like the way that it's coming out. Um, so this is where I'm currently at. I'm putting in the white right now, but um, I think I'm going to go ahead and move up um, the top before filling in the color on this corner. And there's a couple reasons for that. Oh my gosh. Can you please let go of my fabric without ripping it? Please? How did I wiggle this in there? Jeez, okay. Apparently I'm really good at possibly ruining fabric. Okay. So I definitely don't think I'm going to hit 200 by three. I don't know because this is about, um, I don't know. It's going to be, I'm probably going to do just one more of the same length. So mine's probably because I started it way too high on this fabric. Um, but it's okay because I didn't want it to be like the most massive thing ever. Um, so I don't know. Mine is just going to be a little bit smaller, which I'm perfectly fine with. Um, so you can kind of tell that my gold, so that's kind of how I'm doing it. Um, dark to light and then starting with dark to light again in the gold and I'm happy I think that's really for me I think it's really cool looking that's how I feel about it um and then for the inside like plummy border I'm using the 99 <laughs> um so you can tell like it's darker down here and then it got lighter what I'm gonna do with that is for the next section I'm gonna do light to dark um so so that way I'm gonna hopefully that one stays consistent. Um, and if I get back down to this corner um, and I'm at light or something, then I will finagle a piece and make that work. Um, and then the red uh, for the um, for the scale. I'm gonna do the same thing as the plum. So you can tell it was darker, uh, which kind of matches-ish the plum color. You can tell a difference, but it's it's kind of matchy. Um, and then it got brighter. So um, my next piece of red, I'm gonna go brighter to darker. And so um, it's just the gold that I'm gonna reset um, every time. But um, yeah, it's probably, cause I'm an idiot. I probably should have started this maybe about right here um, instead of so high up, but um, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll, I don't know, probably it's about right here. I'll get close to 200, I think, because um, I went past, now I did say on the paper, so actually let me figure this out. Um, I did say on the paper, from for this border in particular um it was about 60 of the 200 
um, for like the shorter side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14. Okay, so. Okay, so this one right here is at 60. Um, so it's probably another additional like 20. So I'm about at 80. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to get just under 200, I think, or right at. So I'm not mad. I'm, I'm definitely not mad about that. And then um, I don't know how far over I want to go. I haven't really, <laughs> I haven't overly thought about that. Um, but that's why I want to do up first. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get some of this white. I'm trying to get the white up to the point where I am done. Um, so I've been working on that. Um, so that way I can move the hoop up because I want to have those two corners. So that way I at least know my height. If that makes sense. Um, and then once I, so that's my goal into tomorrow. And then, um, so that's my goal for the rest of tonight and tomorrow is to get to the second corner. Um, and even if that just means the black, but I don't think it will. It doesn't, this one's going very fast. This border does not take that long compared to a lot of other cross stitches um, whose borders took forever. This looks really intricate, but it's honestly, it's going by real, it's really, really easy. Um, so anyways, um, that's where I'm at for, t for right now. Um, I'll do another check-in in a little while or like, at the full end of the night um, before I'm gonna go to bed. Um, and it's already I think 9 p.m., 9.30. So um, anyways, uh, so I'll do another check-in at the end of tonight and then we'll talk tomorrow for sure um, about how far I get. Um, and then I'll probably put this away. Um, like I said, I just, I wanna get to that second bend whether the colors are filled in or not. Um, but I want to get to that second bend and this will get put away until next weekend because I have some stuff that I have to get done this week, um, and worked on. So yeah, until the next update. Okay. So it is the end of Saturday and this is where I'm going to stop. So I did make it to the corner turn and this is where I'm going to stop for the night. So hopefully we'll get more of this done a little bit more in, um, on the top. And this is about how far I stopped from the top. So not bad. I mean, I could have gotten a little bit more, um, hype on my map if I wouldn't have been such a goober down here, but you know, it's fine. It's gonna work out. I'm not mad about it at all. Um, like I said, I didn't want mine to be super huge, huge, huge. Um, so I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll stop about right here. Um, and then, you know, I'll have a little bit of fabric for, I don't know, something else. Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe not uh, finishing, I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is where I'm gonna leave it for tonight um, because I kinda wanna go play The Sims. That's where I'm at. <laughs> so I'll see y'all in the next check-in. Okay, so not gonna lie, it has been a few days since um, that Sunday that I was working on my border of my map. So, um, I don't remember what exactly happened. I think a friend came over or something and I literally just forgot to record this clip. So that way I could finish out the video. Um, because I'm a silly goose. So, um, <laughs> anyways, 
this is how far I've gotten. So in comparison to my entire slab of fabric, um, I don't feel too bad about this. So this is my start. Um, let me fold it back up again. Um, I did one whole side, fold it again. Um, I did one whole side and I got around to two corners. Um, I really like the colors that I picked. So um, in the rope, there's supposed to be a darker gold and a lighter gold. Um, and you're supposed to, you know, like <laughs> there's pattern, obviously, um, to make it look like you know the shadow or what have you but um i just decided to use a variegated that went from a lighter to a darker gold um it's one of the dmc ones i said it in a previous clip but i cannot remember right now but um so i just started and so i go from darker to lighter and then i start darker to lighter again um, and i did that all the way up and i actually really 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 like it um this inside one is another um, DMC variegated and so I'm just going dark to light and then light back to dark and that's how I'm gonna do it all the way around the frame um, and then my scale pattern is white and then um, DMC is 115 which is the bright red to like a maroonish red color um, but I actually really like I mean there's a few spots where it's darker but for the most part, it's brighter. I think it looks really good. Um, I don't know how well this is gonna work with um, setting your borders, like your boundaries, um, since I only got one side done, but we will see um, how that goes. Um, but I wanted to have, you know, at least rounded two corners and established my height. Um, so now I just need to determine my length um, so we'll see how mapping, um, land borders and like rivers and water and stuff goes in the next, uh, locus. Um, and it may be to where I chart it on like some graph paper or something, or I like, I don't know. I need to see how that's going to go. Um, so it may be like I chart it or something and I go you know, like farther than I think that I might need. Um, and you know, I just cut off the pattern wherever the frame is gonna pass through. Um, I'm not really sure. So, <laughs> um, but my, probably what I'll end up doing is at least for a good chunk I mean, you know, I know that I'm not going to end it until somewhere about like right here. So I have a good chunk where I can at least run the inner like black line. So, um, if I need to, uh, but I basically, I just, I kind of wanted to work on the border as I go. I'm somebody who gets very bored of borders very quickly. Um, funny enough though, I did not get super bored of this border. It was really fun to do. Um, I just really have to get a test stitch done. So I had to make priorities. So um, hopefully more of that will come together um, as the next probably like two or three locusts come out. It, I'm hoping to have the border done by the time we get to the land and sea packs um, at least. So um, that's where I'm at with my map. Um, so I will see y'all in the next Locust video. Bye guys.